Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with another Dragalia in the last video. Today, we're going to be talking about the brand new Gal Dragalia remix that was just announced, that is introducing Humanoid Jupiter and Uriel, and is also returning the Gala Prince. That's going to be today's video, I hope you like it, if you do, feel free to like, it's currently the only thing... No, actually, that's not true, you can still dislike, it just won't show up on the video, but I'll know if you dislike my video, still, so don't worry about it. Um... The hell is I talking about? Yeah, like the video if you like the video. Comment, tell me how you feel about Humanoid Jupiter, Guriel, or hell, if you're even going for the Gala Prince. Are you someone who has a Gala Kronos, but you don't have a unit to use him with? Well, congratulations, the Gala Prince works great with him. Um, and subscribe to me if you want more videos featuring me. That's right, me, I'm Wokey. Hello, nice to meet you. Let's get into the video, shall we? Okay, so... Bum, bum. Humanoid Jupiter. Here he is in his lawyer form. The new offense is based around him. I guessed it was going to be Emil, but it looks like it's not Emil. If Emil is involved in the story and somehow this will be the second time a dragon has gone human to, um, to fuck with Emil, I guess is the nicest way of saying it. I am both beautiful and in dire need of great entertainment. Oh, God. God. I guess like just the right level of suck. All right, to stay off boredom, the light worm Jupiter takes a human form in order to observe humans more closely. Though his appearance has changed, his personality has not. He still loves seeing people flustered by his words. Thunderstrike deals damage to enemies directly ahead, inflicts flash burn, and grants the user a strength amp. If this attack hits, hits an enemy that has the overcharged effect, it will deal bonus damage based on the effects level. If overcharged is at its maximum level, it will be removed after the bonus damage is dealt. Okay. Damage is 1,200 over 1 hit. Bonus damage at level 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all 300, but the number of hits changes. So at level 1, it's 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and 4, 4. Skill energy required is 2,640, and it gives flash burn. In a strength amp, max level 1. So let me check on something real quick. Okay, so this is what I wanted to look up. This is Humanoid Mercury, who so far looks to be built very similar, which was our last Humanoid Dragon. I wanted to see what her strength amp level was, and it turns out hers was max level 2. This one they went with level 1. <laughs> but to be fair, this is on his fastest skill. This one for Humanoid Mercury, which was kind of annoying, was at SP cost 8,000. This one is only um, 2,640, so I guess to kind of balance it out, they felt the need to put a heavy restriction on it, which I guess is fair, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. Let's, let's, let's go into it more. Spark Ignition applies overcharge to the target. If the user is hit by an attack, and it can be avoided by the damage immunity provided by skills while using the skill, but before it applies overcharge, this skill will instead apply four levels of overcharge to the target and nearby enemies. Skill energy required 10,560. Okay. It's <laughs> a lot. Special effects, overcharge level 1, overcharge level 4, if you activate this ability here. If you miss with this and you do not get overcharge level 4, <laughs> be so unbelievably pissed because of how long this fucking cooldown is. Uh, chain co and the co-op ability is strength 10%. The chain co-op ability is team strength amp equals curse resistance 100%. Um, if they have 100%, no, if they have a team strength amp, then curse resistance up 100%. Easy enough. Light Worms Nature 2 reduce susceptibility to paralysis by 100%. When shapeshifting for the first time, the user will transform into Jupiter, regardless of what dragon they are equipped with. The second time onwards, they will transform into High Jupiter instead. Also, when the user dodges an attack, applies overcharge to the attacking enemy, and grants the user a strength amp of a maximum team amp level of 1. After activating, this effect will not activate again for 10 seconds. That is exactly why it's at level 1, because basically... <laughs> You could almost make it to get a strength vamp at level 1 in the first, like, 10 seconds of the game. That's kind of... If not 10 seconds, the first 11 seconds of the game. If this didn't have a limit on it, it would be kind of nuts. If... But... Hmm, okay. Overcharge has 4 levels and deals damage to the affected targeted nearby enemies. When the effect is lost, this damage and its area of effect increase with its level, and when removed at level 4, it also inflicts paralysis and stun. 
At level 1, it only lasts 60 seconds, and then it kind of goes down by 15 seconds every level, so 45, 30, and 15 by level 4. Poisonous Resistance 100%. Arc Absorption 2 fills the Dragon Gauge by 20% and restores the user's HP if they are in range of the attack dealt by the overcharged effect when it is lost. Wow, okay. That's pretty dang nice, actually. So, let's talk about Humanoid Jupiter here. Uh, I think it could go one of two ways. I think he could ever... It seems pretty obvious to me that they had to give him some pretty tight restrictions because if he didn't, he would end up being insanely good. Um, Mercury, I think, had similar kind of things put onto her where she's like... In, in general, for example, if you got this off and running along with like this and the bubble shield and stuff like that, it would be insanely insanely broken but they give a lot of like limitations to it <laughs> to make it so it isn't like that so she ends up being still pretty solid but doesn't break the game like um gala mim does and i feel like that's what humanoid mim does not humanoid mim humanoid jupiter kind of does he's following a similar structure um where he's still going to end up being i think pretty good at the end of the day it is going to come down to how much damage is he dealing with thunderstrike with this crazy overcharge. The thing I actually like about this is that they at least threw you a bone and didn't make it so that this was the only way for you to kind of get, um, like they didn't make it so you lost overcharge. You only lose it when you're already at level four and it's only here for like 15 seconds. So use it or lose it at that point. It's not that bad. Um, but yeah, I think it's, He's gonna be very interesting. I kind of like his design. I like how he's kind of built like the High Dragon Trial version of Jupiter. Um, pretty cool. You get to turn into um, the HDT version of Jupiter, which is nice. All the dra all the humanoid dragons can do it, but the free one. That was the one where they're like, no, no, no Midgar Soma. He's not going to get a. He's not going to get the, his final form, not until we make him a Gala unit or something. And to be honest, I think like the actually crazy, crazy broken version that are on par with Gala Mim for like Mercury and Jupiter are coming when they're going to do Gala versions of them, which I feel like at some point they're going to have to do Gala versions of the humanoid dragons. I feel like that's just in the cards and it will happen sometime after um, they release the final one. Which I think is Zodiac. I think Zodiac's the last one. Alright, so let's move on. Gala Prince, like I said. A negative about him. Um, a negative and a positive, just to balance it out. He kind of does get kind of screwed over by the fact that the best dragon in light is Gala Kronos. And specifically, Gala Kronos is only really good if you turn into Gala Kronos. Because if not, he's just 100% strength, which is okay. It's actually still pretty good for light, because light has terrible dragon options. Um, but specifically in light, when the best dragon in the entire game for them is the dragon that you specifically control and has no like negatives to being a dragon and can dodge and can do all this crazy stuff, to use him and then not to turn into one is kind of feels like a loss of some kind, so I think he kind of gets a little bit screwed over by that. But if, he end, if his um, dragon form ends up being crazy powerful, then it doesn't matter, basically. We'll have to wait and see on that, but that's something to keep in mind. Another positive is that I'm actually kind of curious if this stun that happens here is always 100% chance of stunning. Because if so, then every single time he hits this effect at overcharge level 4, he's just going to be constantly... Um, He's just going to be constantly stunning dudes left and right. I'm pretty sure stun has a resistance, so at a certain point it will stop working, but still, pretty good. But we'll see how that works out when he actually gets released. Galaprince, he's the reason why I remember Galakronos. He works great with Galakronos. There you go. Next one. Uriel. Um, one of the dragons known as the Five Archangels, he is a perfectionist who is strict with others as he is himself, and often and even assigns points and gives grades. His intense personality is carried over to his sigil sworn apostle. So Angelic Blaze deal damage to the target and nearby enemies, draws them together, and inflicts scorched. 
Flame Strength 60%, Uriel's favor too. Uh, grants the, if the user is attuned to Flame, grants the Uriel's Zeal effect when they dodge an attack. At level 1, for 60 seconds, increase the user's strength by 10%, and chance of inflicting scourge by 20%. Level 2, it's 40 seconds, and 40 seconds, 20% strength, 40% chance of scourge. Level 3, 20 seconds, 30% strength, 80% chance of inflicting scourge. So, yeah. Mm. So, it's actually been almost a full year since the last time we got a permanent fire dragon. The reason is, is that, I don't know why, but for some reason, Dragalia decided to make all the best um, fire dragons in the beginning of the game to be Gala units. So, Gallimars, for example, was the best fire dragon for an extremely long time. Basically, everyone just kind of needed to use them and you were good. And then I think, I forget if it was... Um, Gala Agni who came first, it was Gozu Tenno. But either way, um, Gozu Tenno, I think, came out first. If I'm wrong, feel free to correct me on this one. But Gozu Tenno came out, he was limited, and the way that he was able to kind of um, strike away from Agni, not Agni, um, Mars, was to do something that he wasn't doing. So Mars was, of course, um, very good at getting back your skills, and that's the way you dealt a lot of damage with Mars, but Gozu Tenno made it so that when you force strike, you get that much stronger, so units who had a heavy focus on force strike, like Galileonidas, would prefer Gozu Tenno because he gave him more strength, and the more strength that way was better than getting the extra skills. Um, and then when Agni was released, he was very similar, where he could just give pure strength, so if you were using a unit that did not shapeshift, or really take advantage of his ability to shapeshift again, Gala Agni ended up being better for them. So that's how they kind of broke down. And I think that's what they eventually figured out was the only they didn't want to power creep Mars, which is smart, because Mars is still very useful to today. Even though there are better fire dragon options now, the only problem is is that all the other fire dragon options are a little bit like shaky at the moment. Though the the fifth man of unbind for some of them is pretty good. Anyway, Uriel's able to kind of stand apart by having this uh, ability to kind of be used with Scourge characters. I don't know which Scourge character would be best. I think for Galilee and I probably still would prefer Gozu Tenno. So if your main... Actually, we'll see. I was going to say, he, Uriel might be better. Mm. You do four strike a lot with <laughs> Galilee and but there are, I assume, more units that inflict Scourge that don't have crazy Madagascar abilities. It's unfortunate the only ones that I can think of are Madagascars at the moment, but they exist. So I like his design. I like that he kind of focuses in on Scourge, so it gives him a place to be kind of used as this specifically if you have a unit that is only there to apply Scourge. So he's good to go for them. And that is the banner. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be summoning because I would rather save for Dragon Mule and wait for the limited units. Um, these dudes are always going to be in the banner, so there's no real reason for you to go too crazy for them, I feel. Unless you love them, and if you love this man, hunk of man meat over here, feel free to summon. I implore you to always chase the characters you love. But for me, I don't really feel that much about Humanoid Jupiter. Uriel looks cool, but like I said, my fire team is like the last unit, it's like the last team in the world that it needs to be buffed at the moment, because it's the team that Gala Mim lives on, so it's of course unbelievably godlike. So yeah, I think I'm going to be skipping, but I wish everyone who's summoning the best of luck, um, strap yourself in, because it's going to get much rougher before it becomes any safer. From here, after Dragon Yule, it is New Year's, and it's basically going to be six, I'm going to guess six limited units at the very least that you're going to have to worry about. <sighs> Till next time, everyone, you guys have a good day, have a good night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Oh god, where is it? Stop recording.